I find, and I found honestly in my exchanges with the administration in St. George's, a, a, a total resistance to having anybody who they don't agree with even in the same world. Like I'm not on your campus right now because they, the campus that I went to and donated to and sent my three children to because they wouldn't let me come. And why wouldn't they let me come? Well, of course, because they hate my politics. And my feeling was, well, you know, that's wrong. <laughs> First of all, I want to be there. I want to meet the kids. I want to see the kids. I And I feel it could be good for everyone to have this happen. And I don't want a mandatory chapel where everyone has to come and hear me. I don't believe in that. I don't want to press my views on people who don't want to hear them. Let's just have an event where everyone who wants to come can come. And people who don't want to come don't have to come. I don't think you should, again, I don't think you should force your views on anyone. I don't believe in that, okay? I really don't believe in that. They did it to me at St. George's and I didn't like it. And I said so at the time. And so I tried to get a straight answer from the school, like, well, can I come or can I not? No one would answer. So I finally called the head's office. He wouldn't call me back for like over a week. So I called again, he finally called me back. And I said, can I come or not? I could not get a straight answer. And knowing, of course, it was political, but I, but it was like hilarious, <laughs> the legs that they went to to keep me from doing this. And so I said, but what is the problem? And ultimately, the headmaster, who, Mr. Wirtz, as he called himself to me, uh, says, well, we're worried you would garnish national media attention. I was like, garnish? Like the parsley on your steak? What, what are you even talking about? I think you mean garner. I was like, do you really run, say, is this really the headmaster? Do you really run that school? Anyway, so, but, and I said, but if Oprah wanted to come, was more famous than I am, could she come? Whoa, that's a theoretical. Uh, anyway, I can't get an answer. So then I get another call from a board member and he's like, well, actually the real problem is the students don't want you to come. They don't like you. They're embarrassed to tell you. They just don't want to see you. They think you're kind of embarrassing. They don't want you to come. And I was like, okay, you're not hurting my feelings, but this Henry kid seems smart. If he wants me to come, then I'll go sit in a basement room and I'll just talk to Henry for an hour and I'll leave. No, you can't. Just wait another year. I was like, this is really crazy. And they're like, basically, they're like, the faculty hate you so much you're not allowed on campus. So then ultimately, two days ago, I get another call saying, we have a new reason you can't come. And the new reason is it's just not safe. And if you come on campus, people could be killed. And I'm like, what? On campus, people could be killed? Yeah, they'll be killed because people who like you are going to be violent and I guess kill the kids or something or people who hate you are going to kill the kids and i was like this is too crazy what if you have security right and they're like well our security aren't armed i was like your security aren't armed what i sent three kids there if i knew you didn't have armed security i wouldn't have sent my kids they're like well we have protocols so i was like you've got middle-aged guys with iphones calling the cops i'm a middle-aged guy calling an iPhone cops on the iphone like, this is so nuts I'm like no it's just too dangerous so then i was like look i'm just sick of the lying Henry seems like a nice kid. He asked me to come. You're not going to let me on campus because you hate my politics. Ultimately, I'm like, so you won't have... I said, I'll bring armed security. We'll protect everybody. No, we can't do that. We have a no-guns policy. I was like, how are you protecting the kids with security guards with no guns? Well, we are. I said, if Joe Biden wanted to come to your campus, would you try to disarm the Secret Service before he came? <laughs> and the response I got from the head of the board was, well, that's a theoretical. I was like, if Joe Biden wanted to come with... Abrams tanks and F-16s you would allow him because you like Joe Biden. I mean, like, stop lying to me. I just can't deal with it. Why don't you just say, we don't like your politics. We think you're scary. You can't get anywhere near the campus that you went to and were married on and sent all your kids to. And I would be like, okay, that's fine. But rather than just say it to me, we had to get into this whole passive aggressive lying cycle where no one can just be direct. And I just have total contempt for that. I really do. And I felt sorry for the kids who go there. Like, you want to respect people who are honest and direct. And anyway, I just didn't get that. And it made me really worry a lot, a lot. Because education is absolutely impossible under those circumstances where you don't trust the people educating you, where you don't think that they're, they're sincere enough and confident enough to tell you right to your face what they think. They have to make up some story about how it's unsafe I was like, really, has Middletown gotten that bad? <laughs> Is it really that dangerous in Middletown? Are you serious? You know, anyway, it was really a crazy experience and I'm grateful that I can do this on Zoom and the school made it possible, but they had like an emergency meeting of the faculty this morning because I was doing a Zoom call and I was like, just please take some time to educate the kids, calm down, not gonna hurt anybody. Ideas you don't agree with are not dangerous. In fact, they should be welcome. You should be happy to hear them. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, too funny. So who do you think should be making these decisions about who can speak publicly at St. George's or at boarding schools at large and who should not? Well, I'll tell you who should not be. I'll tell you who should not be making these decisions are the faculty. The faculty are employees. Now, I've been an employee almost my whole life. And when you're the employee, you don't get to make policy decisions. You are hired like any other employee, any other employee. And that would include your waiter. That would include me, your talk show host. That would include your English teacher. You don't get to make the policies. And if you don't like the policies, you don't have to work there. The people who make the policies are the head of the school, in this case, Mike Wirtz, and the board of trustees. That's their job. And so the idea that the faculty, again, who should have no policy making authority at all, are scaring the administration, the new head, which is what's happening, and the board into like keeping someone off campus because they don't like his politics, that's major dysfunction, in my opinion. Um, and it's, it's bad. It's not good for the school. It's not good for the kids. Um, no, I think the school should be making that decision. And, and I even said uh, to the school, look, I get it. You don't like my politics and you that's and that's totally fine. I don't like your politics, but it doesn't mean that I don't like you or I don't want to hear you. But why don't you just write a letter and say, you know, we're having Tucker Carlson to campus. As a matter of record, we want to state that we don't like his politics at all. Um, but we believe in the free exchange of ideas and we think that students should have access to different ideas. And I went and looked at the speakers list at St. George's and who has spoken in chapel. And I think those are compulsory. You have to go. And it was, you know, trans activist, trans activist, guy who's mad at white people, trans activist. Okay, fine. But it was all from one perspective. And I thought, where's the balance? Like kids, even though they're kids, like they're not stupid. I was a St. George's student. You sort of know what's up. They're forcing something down your throat. They're not allowing you to disagree. You're not welcome to give your opinion, you have to sit there and take this stuff, even if you agree with it, even if you agree with every word of it, it's so insulting and patronizing. So why not write a letter saying, we don't agree with this Carlson guy, we think he's kind of a creep, and we don't even like him, but students have asked him to come, and therefore in the name of academic freedom and free speech and free inquiry, all of which are the basis of education, we're gonna allow him to speak. I said, do that, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. That would really help the school because then everyone would know the school is not closed-minded and reactionary. It's open-minded and progressive in the truest sense. And they're like, no, okay. <laughs> so I couldn't come to campus.